Hello, Squidlings. My name is Ted. I am the Squid. Uh, I make videos about whatever, and, and this month I'm, I'm pretty busy, so I'm just going to tell you about a, uh, a nice little vacation uh, I had with my mom, where I brought her through Japan. Oh, it was very nice meeting up with my mom in, uh, in Okinawa. I, I've lived here in Okinawa for about a year now, um, and I, I've been calling my mom, but she hasn't actually seen where I live. I showed her around Oist. Uh, she met the professor of my lab. Oh, it was, it was great seeing my mom again. I brought her to uh, Chudami Aquarium, uh, the most famous aquarium in Okinawa, I think. Uh, and uh, she really liked it. We got to see uh, the whale shark eating. All it, <laughs> the, the whale shark, they, they put food on the surface of its water, and it just goes to the surface, and it just opens its mouth. And the water just falls into it. It's like when you're draining your bathtub or something, and you just have a little water tornado. That's, that's just how it ate. Um, we also saw uh, cherry blossoms. It's, it's cherry blossom season in Okinawa. It's, a, it's Sakura season in Okinawa. Uh, and then we went to Hokkaido, which is under, I think, about seven feet of snow, about two meters of snow. So it's definitely not uh, cherry season around there. But before I, before I talk about Hokkaido, well, we had a little, we had a little adventure. Well, first of all, uh, at Chudami Aquarium uh, and, and the, the related uh, dream zone in the same area as the aquarium, I got a really nice t-shirt. I think this is my favorite t-shirt right now. It's got a she saw right here. I believe this is the one with its mouth open. And then it has another she saw down here. Oh, there he is. I think that's the she saw with its mouth closed. Well, when you have she saw, one of them's got their mouth open, one of them's got their mouth closed. I don't know which one's which. They look about the same, but, but I promise, one, one has their mouth open, one of them has their mouth closed. But anyway, the, the day before we went to Hokkaido, we had a hotel in Naha, which is uh, the largest city in Okinawa, really close to the airport. And, and so I got to park my car in basically a car vending machine. So there's just like this dark room, and you park your car in this dark room. You have to park it in a very precise position, but then you get out of your car and you just walk away and the room closes and then your car is lifted away and you don't see your car again. Until uh, a day or two later, we decided to drive to the airport and uh, we got the car out of the vending machine. And so we, we just ordered my car from the vending machine. So the car comes down, boom, door opens, there's my car. Uh, the problem was, when I, uh, when I parked in the dark, I had to, you know, go forward and, and reverse and park in a very specific place. And when I reversed, it was very dark in that room, so I turned on my car's light, my, the, the inside light, uh, so that I could see the stick and I could put it in reverse. Um, and I forgot to turn off that light. So when we got the car out, the car wouldn't start. So we had to call someone from the Japanese Automotive Federation, JAF, J-A-F, JAF, J -A -F, J -A -F um, and they were able to power up my car. So we were in a bit of a rush. We didn't want to miss our flight, so we drove there as fast as we could. Uh, we went through uh, airplane security. Air airport security. They took my mom's knitting needles. My, my mom has been traveling with knitting needles for a couple months now. She, she went on a, a cruise in South America. They didn't take her knitting needles when she went there or when she came back. Uh, she went to Los Angeles, to Tokyo with her knitting needles. She went from Tokyo to Okinawa with her knitting needles. They wouldn't let her take her knitting needles from Okinawa back to, to Tokyo. But anyway, while we were going through security, I emptied my pockets and I saw that I didn't have my car keys. So we got on that plane just in time, but boy was I stressed out. <laughs> I feel like I'd had, a, I'd had quite a stressed out morning. But then we touched down, I got to turn my phone off airplane mode, and I had an email 
saying that the guy from Jaff, the very nice man from Jaff, he accidentally took my car keys. So I would I would just get my car keys back when I came back to Okinawa. So, oh, that uh, huge load off my mind. My gosh. So I just got to uh, bring my mom to Hokkaido. I, I know some people in Hokkaido. Um, they brought us... They brought us to a lot of places, but I think my favorite was they brought us to uh, uh, the snow festival. When you don't have a uh, sakura season in February, so they had snow festivals, they had ice festivals, it was very beautiful. Then we went to Tokyo, and from Tokyo we went to Kamakura, and we got to see a very gigantic Buddha, like a, like a thousand-year-old statue of Amitabha, uh, Amida Buddha. Um, so that's, that's a very nice, gigantic Buddha to look at. Uh, but then I brought her to, uh, Yokohama, and I brought her to, I think, her favorite part of our little vacation. I brought her to the Cup Noodle Museum. It's an amazing museum. I, I definitely recommend it. There's, there's, like, an entire enormous room filled with a timeline of Cup Noodle ramen. And, and that's just a really interesting room. So many different kinds of Cup Noodle all from the same brand. One brand across time having so many different kinds of cup noodles. And you get to learn about the uh, guy who invented cup noodles, uh, Momofuku Ando. He's a, a very interesting man, uh, a very intelligent man. He's a very good businessman. But I think the museum goes just a little bit too far comparing him to Albert Einstein. I think that's going a little bit too far. But it's, it's his museum, he gets, to, he gets to be compared to Albert Einstein as he eats uh, ramen that he sent to space. And uh, in the uh, cup noodle museum, we got to make our own cup noodles. Here, I've got, I, I got to, to make my own cup noodles. Uh, I just made mine a sort of psychedelic rainbow sort of dealie. Uh, and I don't even remember what's on it. You get to pick the toppings and everything, but... I, I think I was mostly just glad to glad to be showing my mom around. I've I've been to that cup noodle museum before. I, I never thought that I'd be bringing my mom to that cup noodle museum. So my mom uh, brought her cup noodles uh, back to Los Angeles. Uh, she gets to be with the cats again. The, the cats they're really not happy when people leave. They're just bored. They don't have anything to do with us gone. But one thing that I thought of because of, of recent news and because I just met my mother, I was thinking about balloons. Balloons are all over the news right now. Isn't that interesting? Well, I, I'm not the, the biggest guy on international politics or anything like that, but uh, the, the story as I've heard it is that uh, China had a mysterious balloon. It floated over America, and America was very concerned about it, and eventually we shot it down. Uh, and, and China didn't like that. They, they said, don't, don't overreact. But, but anyway, uh, we're getting new balloons. <laughs> we're having more balloons pop up. And uh, people on Reddit are, are very interested and wondering if these balloons, are, are they from China or are they from outer space? Are they space balloons? <laughs> are, they, are they UFO alien balloons? Um, and my guess is no. I, I don't think the aliens are coming here in balloons, um, even if even if these are sort of vaguely UFO alien-shaped balloons. Um, but this reminds me of a book that my mom gave me when I was very young. Uh, she read it when she was quite young. Uh, it's a book called The Mad Scientists Club. So the, the Mad Scientists Club, it's a, a book, it's like an anthology of short stories. I think there are a couple couple books of these short stories about these kids in the 1970s. These boys who, who are always playing pranks on their town. One of their common pranks is, I think they have multiple short stories, where they trick the town into thinking that something interesting or supernatural is happening. Like they have a story where there is a sea monster. They, they make their own artificial sea monster, and, and they trick the town into thinking that there's a sea monster around. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that they have a story or two where the, the boys make up a UFO. I, I think that's what's happening. <laughs> you know, I, I think America was caught off guard by a mysterious Chinese balloon, 
and that's it's very interesting. It's it's quite upsetting, you know. Um, and because it was interesting, because it was upsetting, there were a lot of uh, mad scientists clubs out there uh, who said, "Hey, I bet we could get people's attention too. Let's let's make our own balloon." And so now there are just a bunch of balloons, and those balloons aren't necessarily for any malicious purpose, but they are there so that we're worried about them. <laughs> you know, all those uh, mad scientist clubs, they want us to see their balloon and get all worried about it. When, when we're worried about those balloons, those mad scientists clubs, oh, they're just, oh, they're, they're enjoying it. That's all the news that I've got in my life that I can tell you at the moment. Uh, but I will, uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, I, I got my keys, by the way. The, the, the nice man from Jaff, he gave me my keys. I've got my keys again. <laughs> All right, bye bye Well, you, you might have noticed the, uh, the video isn't quite over. Um, there, there was part of my little vacation with my mom that I wasn't sure if I should really include it in this, in this video. My mom gave me a, a couple presents for, for Christmas. Uh, she gave me some... Uh, uh, Taco Bell <laughs> ingredients, because I uh, complained that there weren't any Taco Bells in Okinawa except in a military base. So I was wondering if I could go to a military base and say, hey, I'm an American, I need some Taco Bell once in a while. But uh, she also gave me a gift that she told me I wasn't allowed to open until she got there. And I didn't really think much of it at the time, but then my mom came to Okinawa, and the first thing she wanted to do was, uh, open that gift with me. And, well... I had no idea what it was. Um, I, I opened it, and I see there's part of this padding with a figure playing a, uh, fiddle. And I swear I'd seen this picture before. But I, I, well, I, I suddenly realized what it was. My mom and I had talked about this in the past, um, getting a quilt featuring my dad's favorite shirts. My, my dad died um, about four years ago, and he was a, he was a fiddle player among among other instruments. But I think the fiddle was his favorite. And he wore a lot of a lot of t-shirts about fiddling, <laughs> um, and a lot of uh, a lot of t-shirts about some of the uh, the musical events that he'd been to and and where he'd played the fiddle. Um, and then near the uh, the bottom of the of the quilt, some of these are are t-shirts that uh, I gave him. This one, he got at my first, um, official race of any kind. Um, I was a long-distance runner, I, I wanted to run a marathon, I think I was, uh, 14 at the time, uh, but the first official race that I ran was, uh, uh, six miles. But he did the 5k at the same time that I was doing the 10k, and, and this was the shirt that he got doing that, so he wore that all the time. This one is really an interesting story. At one point, my dad would uh, just walk around maybe a few miles uh, just playing his fiddle. And he would do that a few times a week for, I think he did it for most of a summer one year. And one day, a, uh, a little girl stopped him um, and showed that she painted a picture of him. I, I don't I don't know who this little girl was or, or how old she was. I think my dad might have said that she was six years old. But uh, <laughs> what a nice little girl giving my dad a, a a picture she painted of him walking around playing his fiddle. <laughs> um, and so for my dad's uh, last Christmas, really. Um, He'd had this uh, painting for a couple years, so I took the painting and I scanned it and I gave him a t-shirt with that painting on it. And, um, and he wore that all the time and, until he died. So 
so this quilt really means a lot to me and my mom. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of staggering. <laughs> um, I told my mom that she sort of sent my dad to Japan <laughs> without me even knowing it. Most of the time I knew my dad, uh, he was not physically well enough to go on international travel. So I, I wasn't expecting <laughs> that he would sort of do it posthumously, you know? <laughs> I, so I got to have my dad keep me warm that night. I mean, holy crap. I think I'm uh, bringing this up because I'm not sure why I'm doing this YouTube channel. <laughs> I, I, I just made a couple videos for fun four years ago, and then my dad died. And so I just kept kept making videos, I guess, because it was, it was fun to do, and I guess because I got to think of my dad making them. Oh, uh, by the way, this, uh, this t-shirt that I'm wearing now. Uh, I got this one in Kamakura. Uh, there's, there's Amitabha. <laughs> That's, uh, probably the most popular Buddha in Pure Land Buddhism. What a, what a thing. But I, I guess all those pictures that I showed you, that my mom and I took across Okinawa, those are, are like a, like a quilt. They represent all kinds of memories that my mom and I have together. So me making a video like this, this is sort of like me making a little quilt of part of my life. And maybe that's a, a good reason for me to, to keep making videos every once in a while. Yeah, I, I, guess, <laughs> I guess that's all I have to say. Alright, bye bye by the way, I've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash thinkster. I want to thank all these squidlings and elder squids. Thanks. <laughs>